Miss Shante with Shiketi Ant, and I'm going to be reading from Brave Black First. And it is 50 plus African American women who changed the world by Cheryl Willis Hudson. So, again, there we go. Black, I mean, Brave Black First. Today, I'm going to be reading about Phyllis Wheatley. Born 1753. Senegal, Gambia, West Africa, died December 5th, 1784 in Boston, Massachusetts. In every human breast, God has implanted a principle, which we call love of freedom. It is impatient of oppression and pants for deliverance. That's a quote from her. Okay. Phyllis Wheatley was the first black female poet to be published in the United States and also the first person of African heritage to make a living as a writer here. Her book, Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Morale, was published in 1773, and her individual poems were widely read during the uh, colonial era. Phyllis's fame as a poet was also heralded in England, and she visited there in 1771. Phyllis was born around 1753 and was kidnapped from her home in Sangalese, Gambia, a region of us of West Africa, transported to America in 1761. She was purchased by a wealthy Boston tailor, John Wheatley Phyllis. Uh, Phyllis quickly mastered speaking English and with the help of Wheatley's two children, she also learned to read and write. Phyllis read the Bible and classic works by Homer, Virgil, John Milton, and, and Alexander Pope. By 1770, she had written and published her poem, an elegiac poem of a death that celebrated divine and eminent servant of Jesus Christ, the Reverend and learned George Whitefield. Phyllis received international acclaim in the abolitionist and literacy circles of New England and Philadelphia. Phyllis was particularly fond of particularly fond of the couplet as a poetic form and infused biblical symbolism and references to the patriotism of every revolutionist. Race is a theme in her first collection of 39 poems, among them on being brought from Africa to America, which is about the anthologized in poetry, um, is, which is often anthologized in poetry collections. During her lifetime, Phyllis's talent was heralded by the President George Washington and others with whom she corresponded. Massachusetts Governor Thomas Hutchinson and signers of the Declaration of Independence, Benjamin Rush and John Hancock attested to her intelligence and her skill as a poet. Phyllis was freed from slavery after her master's, after her master's death in 1774. In 1778, she married a free black man, John Peters, and continued to write. Despite her husband's economic insecurity and her own failing health, she completed a second volume of poems, but she was not able to raise enough money to have them published. Phyllis Wheatley, a poet, I encourage you to write a poem. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Miss Shantae.